Hello, everyone. My name is Xiaowei Wang. I'm a postdoc researcher from the Electrical Engineering Department, Technical University of Denmark. So today is my great pleasure to give a presentation for this panel session with the title of Data-Driven Approaches for Enhancing Resilience of Multi-Energy Systems, an overview. So this is the outline of today's presentation. First, I will talk about the background of my research study and the state of the art on power system resilience, research challenges on multi-energy system resilience. And then I will talk about multi-energy system resilience quantification matrix, resilience enhancement, and finally the conclusion. So why do we need resilience? Nowadays, our energy systems are facing more extreme events, such as uh, natural disasters, which can damage the system infrastructure like power lines and wind turbines. We also uh, facing more challenges from cyber attacks, which can interrupt the communication between physical components and the control center. We are also facing challenges from a pandemic, such as COVID-19, which cause severe stress on healthcare systems and huge reductions in electricity demand. We also have larger penetration of power electronics, which causes loss of rotational inertia and high fluctuation by renewable sources, which can impact the system stability and also increase the likelihood of low probability events mentioned above and provoke large consequences. Our energy systems are now strongly coupled and we call it a multi-energy system. This multi-energy system can include energy systems like digital heating, natural gas, and power systems through coupling technologies. For example, combined heating power plants, gas turbines. And because of this strong coupling, such extreme events can cause cascading failures in different energy systems, leading to even worse impacts. Such a good example can be the Texas event happened uh, in February, where they have the Arctic air froze, the power plants, gas lines, and mechanical instruments. And the power grid was also shut down for a long time, leaving to more than 4 million people without electricity, and no million people without heat, and a lot of people without water. And this kind of event has been uh, happened before in Texas. So there's a huge need for multi-energy system resilience. So what is multi-energy system resilience? For power system resilience, there's a clear definition from uh, HPE task force group, the ability to withstand and reduce the magnitude and or duration of disruptive events which includes the capability to anticipate, absorb, adapt to, and recover from such an event. However, there is no standardized definition for multi-energy system resilience. And how can we quantify and enhance it? According to the state art study, there are several metrics can quantify the multi can quantify the power system resilience, such as HPE matrix and DOE matrix, which is uh, developed by the Department of Energy in the US. Such metrics can quantify uh, the res uh, resilience uh, from the perspective of storm resilience, which is about a ratio of number of customers without power for more than 12 hours, and quantify the resilience and their non-storm uh, non -storm events. So the ability to withstand the most uh, weather events. And the, such DOE metrics can quantify the resilience by analyzing the resilience of current system and also performance based by evaluating the impact on house of uh, hours of uh, outage, energy not, so, not served for customers and time to recovery to the normal stage and loss of business. 
And there are also some uh, enhancement strategies for power system resilience. So for operational level, for distribution system, we can uh, reconfigure the network to enhance the resilience. We can use uh, distributed generators in microgrid to uh, provide black start cap capacity and to prevent um, the microgrid from cascading failure in the main grid. We can also use load restoration for distribution grid. For transmission grid, we can use the de-icing devices, uh, preventive re response, and the emergency response. For planning stage, we can optimal locating and sizing our uh, batteries and, and re re renewable energy sources. We can also elevating the substations and facilities and add up like backup generators to make the system more resilient. We can also build in redundant uh, transmission and distribution rules. We can also enhance our communication um, abil ability by optimal encryption our um, uh, communication. So improve the encryption strength of the data packets associated with the physical components used for control and monitoring the uh, system. However, we have research challenges to quantify and enhance the multi-energy system resilience. So from this figure, the conceptual, conceptual uh, power system resilience curve, it can be observed the system undergoes in response to a disruptive event and quantified in the terms of resilience level and its evolution during the event and after the event. So this conceptual uh, resilience curve is, uh, includes four stages. The anticipate stage, we call it phase one, to predict and prepare for the event and risk assessment methods can be applied here. Phase two is called absorb. So a system can absorb the impacts of system perturbation and uh, minimize the consequences with little effort. The third stage is uh, called adapt to, the ability of a system to adjust to undesirable situations by undergoing some changes. And last phase is called recover. So system to recover quickly from the potential disruptive events. And currently the uh, state art study uh, was uh, focused on building a matrix for phase three and phase four. So for the future multi energy system resilience, firstly, we need to have a focus more on the phase zero infrastructure planning and market products which means that we can enforce or renovate our aging infrastructures or planning new components to enhance the infrastructure resilience. We can also have new market product or business models to have uh, to motivate the sub, um, stakeholders to support for the resilience. We also have to focus more on anticipate phase one where the system operator can have a short-term prediction of the extreme events, such as natural disasters before it will happen. And in this way, the operator can enhance the system resilience before the event will happen. And on top of that, to uh, quantify the multi-energy system resilience, we need to add other dimensions for other energy systems. For example, in this figure, we add a dimension for heating systems. So we need resilience level for heating systems. And when we have a disrupt event, some events, for example, like uh, blizzard, which can influence both um, the wind speed and also the temperature. So it can um, have the impact on both heating system and power systems. Well, some events, let's say, for example, only the a wind speed, which can only impact the power systems, uh, such impact will be propagated to heating systems through the coupling technologies, such as combined heating power plants.
So it's important to have a quantification matrix for multi and system resilience, whether infrastructure and operational resilience covering all phases and all any systems are considered. In addition, due to the high development of monitoring and control devices in the multi energy system, there are big high speed and real time data acquired from the system. So how to use such data in an effective and efficient way is uh, very important. Also, the enhancement strategies considering networks can be formulated as a non convex uh, problems. So such non convex optimization can be uh, can have high computational burden and hard to solve. So in order to deal with such research challenges, several methods can be developed to quantify and enhance the multi and system resilience. To build such metrics, it's important to consider um, the different locations during the anticipate phase. Which means that the probability of extreme events should depend on locations and types of the events. For example, in Copenhagen, Denmark, according to historical data of temperature and wind, there's actually a relatively positive uh, correlation between them. So, which means that it's unlikely to have an event like blizzard that both low temperature and the high wind speed will happen at the same time. But Maybe it's not the case in Texas, so it's important to consider the locations, even in the same country. And also, when we uh, quantified uh, the resilience, it's important to consider all the uh, uh, systems of performance. For example, the resilience level over time, uh, quantified through online components, we need to consider the number of transmission and distribution lines in power systems, uh, generator capacities. And for these heating systems, we need to consider the heating pipes, uh, heating plant capacities, and the similar to natural gas systems. And for operational performance, we need to consider the power flow, voltage and frequency for power systems, and heat flow pressure, temperature for heating systems, and the similar to uh, for gas systems. For multi energy system resilience enhancement, it's important to study phase one anticipate. So um, we need to have more a better focus model for extreme events. And traditionally, we have statistic models such as regression models, simulation based models, which focused on uh, physical mechani mechanisms of damages, machine learning models such as artificial neural networks, support a vector machine. And nowadays, there are uh, online state awareness models used for assess power system security problems, where the model instantaneously determines the output through the classification or uh, regression procedure according to the real time data from the phaser uh, measurement unit. And such model can be extended to power uh, multi energy system resilience problem where we can use the measurement from different sensors in different energy systems to have online state awareness of the resilience. Also, we need to have optimal enhancement strategies for the multi energy system resilience. In order to do this, we need to consider uncertainties during the extreme events. This can be done through stochastic optimization, robust optimization, and distributionally robust optimization. And currently, there are studies uh, focusing on artificial neural networks for fast uh, dispatch uh, problem in electricity and gas networks. Such method is a model-free method uh, considering uh, input neurons with the uh, load profiles and output neurons with the power and gas output or binary of feasibility. So such method is faster than piecewise linearization of network constraints and outperformance than uh, second order cone uh, problem in accuracy. So this method can be also applied to enhance resilience by, for example, output neurons of multi-entity resilience. 
and this can solve the problem of uh, network unconvex problems. So in conclusion, the multi energy system resilience should take all energy systems resilience into account. Also, the quantification matrix can uh, vary by time and uh, vary by locations. And the online models can instantaneously determine the resilient state with real-time data. And we can also have used artificial neural networks to enable the faster decision-making process for multi-ended system resilience. So that's all about my data-driven approaches applied to a multi-ended system resilience um, topic. Thanks for watching. And if you have problems, please uh, kindly contact me through my email address. Thank you very much.